discussing Fitchburg now. This week's show is very exciting. We are doing a live paint demo by certified Bob Ross instructor, Stacey Sparrow Murphy. Welcome. Thank you. Stacey Sparrow Murphy, owner of the Art on the Rocks and a newly certified Bob Ross paint instructor like Happy Little Trees Bob Ross. Happy Little Trees Bob Ross. So we'll be doing a live paint or you'll be doing a live paint demo yes. today. What do you be painting? Uh, so I will actually be painting Waterfall in the Woods, which is a Bob Ross painting. Can we throw this up on the main screen? There we go, Waterfall in the Woods. So this is a Bob Ross painting. It is a Bob Ross painting. And you learned how to do this in your fantastic studio, in learning Bob Ross certi yes. certification program. Yes, I went to Florida for the month of July and did a month long course uh, at his studio that he opened in the 80s uh, in New Smyrna Beach to become a certified Bob Ross instructor. And so are you the only certified Bob Ross instructor in the area? In the area, yes. There are about 2,500 people that have ever been certified in the world. Uh, they offer certification courses in Europe as well. And there are about 1,000 active instructors in the US. So, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, Bob Ross painting, <laughs> and then live on DFN, painting Waterfall in the Woods. Okay. So, if you want to follow along at home to paint this painting, um, it's the supplies that we need. We have a graphic of the supplies that you'll be using. We throw that on the main screen. So uh, what, what are these supplies, Stacy? Uh, so we uh, use only licensed Bob Ross products. His brushes and paints really make a big difference. We're using our two inch brush, one inch, number six fan brush and a palette knife today. Okay, and so the colors that you'll be needing to paint the waterfall in the woods, here are the colors. We will be using alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, dark sienna, van dyke brown, phthalo blue, sap green, and titanium white. And these are all Bob Ross uh, oil paints? Correct. Okay, so Bob Ross certified products, you, you're a big fan? I am, I am. I actually had never painted with oils before this course. Um, so it was really awesome to paint with a new medium and these paints and supplies really make it very simple that the novice can come in and do a class. Okay, awesome. great. So we are going to cut to Stacy painting live the Bob Ross Waterfall in the Woods. And then after that, we will do an interview with Stacy to talk about what she's painted. All right, so we'll see you. Hi, so we are going to be painting Waterfall in the Woods uh, in the style of Bob Ross today. So I've already done a few things. I've already black gessoed my canvas and added a thin coat of liquid clear. I've also put a coat of alizarin crimson and phthalo blue on there to draw out a nice purple for our background. So I've laid out all the colors on my palette and I'm gonna start off with my one inch brush. So I'm gonna just take this brush and pull through a little bit of my titanium white and just tap it off on my palette. So we're gonna start in here somewhere where we want our light source to be, and we're just gonna put some white down. Now, as I draw away from that, we'll get a little lighter, and we'll start to see those colors that I already put on there. So we might see some blues, some purples, and we're just gonna use an X brush stroke and work our way away from that central light source. If I want to brighten that up a bit, I can. We'll pop a little more light in there. Perfect. So I'm going to grab my two inch brush, which we had on that supply list for you. And now we're just going to soften this up. So I'm going to just start in the center here and just barely touching. I'm gonna to start to move that paint around and soften up that background. Every once in a while I get one of these little hairs that like to climb in there. I'll get that out of the way. Maybe, maybe it'll fight me, I don't know. There it goes. And we're just gonna continue to soften this up. Smoothing out all those colors. 
and starting to really see where the magic comes out and see those colors popping through that white paint. So in front of that light source, I'm going to grab our fan brush. This is a number six fan I'm using. I'm going to mix up a little color to draw out some of those purples. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my alizarin crimson and my phthalo blue and just stir it up a bit with my palette knife. Let's spread that out. So now we're gonna throw in a couple trees that are far off in the distance. Always tap that brush off. And these, we don't see much detail. They're far, far off in the distance. So we're just gonna throw in a few little trunks that we'll see off in the back there. The nice thing about oil paints when I'm doing this, you don't really need to wash very often. At some point we will beat the devil out of it just because. And I'm just gonna stir up that paint a little, get rid of some of that extra. And we're gonna go in and throw some trees that we would see off in the distance. Always tapping my paint through the bristles. I'm loading it up. Most of what you do is on here. Most of what we want to see happen happens right on this palette. So we're just going to throw in some little trees that just kind of arch right over this space. These are real dark. We're not seeing a lot of detail. So they're far, far off in the distance. And just tapping, just gently touching the canvas and letting those trees just pop out. Throw a couple more up here. And yeah, we'll throw a couple up here too. All right. So I'm gonna take what's left on that one inch brush and we wanna highlight these a little bit. We wanna see a little bit of that light passing through. So we're just gonna grab some of this white, tapping off. Again, a lot of what happens, happens right here. And we're gonna throw a few highlights on there. Not everyone, we don't wanna color out everything, we wanna save the dark. Just get a little bit of light in there. And again, we're just tapping. We're just picking it up and putting it down. Popping some of those. I'm not too concerned about what's happening over here, over here, because we're going to paint over that section anyways. We're gonna get some more defined trees so we can see what's going on over there. All right. I have two one inch brushes, just so you don't have to watch wash. So I'm gonna pull through some of my sap green here. Again, most of what I want to happen, I wanna see it happen here. So I'm pulling through this paint and lifting up and I get this little popcorn ceiling effect. And now we're gonna put some of these trees that we're gonna see in the front. So we're just tapping. It's a little tough to see them at first cause we have to add the highlights. So we're just kind of leaving some little ins and outs. Those are where the squirrels live. Some little places. These trees are going right in front of those other guys. We've got ourselves a little tree. I'm gonna go through and do the same thing on the other side. Just touching. Just kind of letting the brush just barely kiss the canvas. Saving some of that dark. I don't want to get rid of everything. Trees have little holes and ins and out their tree. You can't tell a tree what to do. You can let it drape over a little. And just tap the canvas. 
Perfect. So that same dirty brush, I'm gonna get rid of some of my excess paint, but I don't really need to wash it. I'm just gonna swirl this around. I'm gonna get a little highlight on these. So same dirty brush, I'm just gonna roll through some of my cadmium yellow. We could get a little crazy too and throw a little Indian yellow in there as well. And we'll just swipe and lift right through those colors. Get a good amount of paint on your brush. So Bob's whole technique is about having wet on wet paint. So that's how we can get a painting done in such a short amount of time because we're applying that wet paint right on top of other wet paint. So just here or there, not every piece. We're just gonna start to apply a little highlight. Now if I start to run out of paint, I can load it up again. Maybe a little Indian yellow, a little cadmium yellow. And we're just adding a little sparkle. I asked while I was at the course if I could put glitter. Apparently that's not Bob Ross approved. But I think glitter is always a good option. So we're just gonna pop a few highlights in there. And now we've really drawn that out and put all that other stuff off into the distance. I'm gonna load this up again. If any point your paint gets away from you, grab your palette knife, scoop it up, roll it back out flat. Get my popcorn ceiling on there. So these classes, this is actually one that we've taught at Art on the Rocks. And uh, we have people that have never picked up a brush. We've had a lot of people that have never used oils come in and in about a four hour session, we have this painting. A Couple little highlights. I like to let it travel right off the edge. Don't feel like you're stuck within the confines of that rectangle. You can let it go right off the sides. So we've got our light source, we've got our trees, our mid-ground, and now these trees that are closest to us. Here's the fun part. So I'm gonna go into my Bob Ross paint thinner. Oils aren't what they used to be. So this paint thinner's got a little bit of an odor to it, but uh, non-toxic, and all the paints are non-toxic as well. So we're gonna just swipe it through there. You always wanna make sure that lid's closed. It evaporates very quickly. And then this handy beater rack right here. So right in there, I've got a little rack and I can beat the devil out of it. Don't look, you don't wanna look at it. Beat the devil out of it. You always wanna dry it off too. So after we get that paint off there, wanna make sure all that thinner's off. And uh, let's add a waterfall. Let's get that waterfall in there. So I'm just gonna run that same one inch brush. Most of this painting is done with my one inch. And I'm gonna tap the bristles off. I could add a little hint of blue in there if I wanted to. A little blue in my water. And tap those bristles. So we're gonna pick a spot. Just gonna place this right down, drag over, and just let that appear. We're gonna drag over and thicken it up a bit and let that appear. So I'm gonna use that two inch just to soften the bottom a little bit where it's gonna pool up and hit the water at the bottom. Get rid of some of that excess paint. This is nice, a lot of uh, just wiping your brush. You don't need to always go into the paint thinner. In my case, I often find my way to my drink with my brush, so I like not having to use it as often. So I'm gonna soften this up at the bottom. So we're just gonna pull upright and just soften the bottom of that a little bit. And I like all these little inconsistencies. It's, it's water, it moves. And behind a waterfall is usually a dark, cavernous place. So we've got some bright spots up where our light source is and it gets a little darker down here, which is perfect. So we're gonna put this guy aside. While I'm here, we'll wipe off this fan brush in case we go back to it. And I just pull that paint right out. All these brushes I use are Bob Ross 
brushes. So it works right with any episode you would watch. You want to just follow along at home, although most people didn't. I think it's something like 90% of viewers never actually painted with Bob. He was just kind of nice to watch and listen to. He's so calming. So I'm going to swipe some of those off. All right, let's see. I've got our water fallen. Let's add a little bit of a water place for that to land down here. I'm going to go back to my one inch. I'm not going to bother cleaning it. I can use that same brush. I'm going to pull through some of that white. If I get a little bit of purple in there or blue, that's fine. But I'm always going to tap off those bristles. All right. So I'm going to put a place for this waterfall to land right down here. I'm just going to place my brush down and drag. I want this to just kind of disappear off and around the corner. So we've got that little place in, but we want to soften that up. So I'm going to go back to my two inch. The two inch brush, water travels side to side. So now I'm going to soften that reflection up. Sometimes your easel gets in the way. So I'm going to pop mine up on these little ledges and hope it doesn't run away. And we're just going to go side to side and you can see how quickly that water just moves. And that's because of that liquid clear that I put on earlier. So this liquid clear keeps your paint slick and moving around nice and easy. We can just soften that up as much as we'd like. I've got a little pool for that place to land. Not too worried what happens here because we got to add all of our little splashes at the bottom. So I'm going to wash these guys off again. Wipe off some of that extra paint. And we're going to do a little palette knife action. This is my favorite part. So the palette knife, I'm going to use my Van Dyke Brown. And I'm just going to pull out a little path. And then you just cut across. You get a little roll of paint. So on there, we've got about the width of a spaghetti noodle. Little roll of paint right across the top of the knife. And we want to plant this waterfall. We're going to pick a space for it to live. So I'm going to just start right in here. I'm using my knife nice and level right now. And if you watch my handle, I'm holding this very loosely, and just letting the knife kind of do the work. And we're just going to scratch in a little path and just drag that right off. Now, I need that path Get my roll of paint again. Sometimes I like to tap it off if you're getting a little extra. And we're going to plant our waterfall. So we're going to make a little cliff under this. And we're just going to let that run down. And these little spaces of paint are going to create our cliff. I'm just going to let that run out. All these little breaks that you see in the paint, that's what we want. That's going to give us some of our texture in our rocks. That noise helps. And we're just going to place it down. And you don't hear my knife scraping. I'm really just letting the paint kind of suck right up to the canvas. And we're just depositing the paint. We're not scraping anything away. I'm just going to let that run down. So we want to highlight this too, this wet on wet. So we're always applying wet paint on top of wet paint. And you can see this happens pretty quickly. I'll toss this guy. So I'm going to take my Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to add a little bit of my dark sienna. And we'll pop a little bit of white in there too. So when I'm mixing these, I'm just kind of letting the paint marble. I don't want to mix it too much. I want to see all those variations of my brown and my white. And we got a little red in there. And I'm just going to pull through and get another swipe on my palette knife. Now right at the top, very gentle. I don't want to cover everything I just did. But that wet paint, I'm going to let start to bring out some highlights. And we're just going to pull that path right off the edge. 
So now we've created a place I wouldn't walk there, but you could, you could walk there. Now we'll do a little bit of highlights to draw out that cliff. So you can see, again, I just drew that out and I've got this nice marble. I'm not mixing it to make a new color. I wanna see all those variations. I'm gonna swipe it up with my knife. This time I'm gonna hold my knife vertical, right on the edge here. And we're just gonna swipe in a little highlight to create some sections in our cliff. I'm trying to be very gentle. I don't wanna push the paint around. I wanna deposit that wet paint on top. So now we're getting little ins and outs on our cliff. Pop a few more in here. And a lot of this technique is kind of a one and done. You don't want to overwork things. You just want to let that paint mix and where it lands, it lands. Where it doesn't land, it doesn't land. That's totally fine. Throw a little more of that in, a little more white. And just pull through until it mixes up a bit. Get my pull of paint, a little spaghetti noodle. And just drag it across. And now we've got some little bends in our cliff. Oh, throwing brushes in my paint. So I wanna even this out a little. I think we need maybe a little rocky wall over on this side. So I'm gonna start with that Van Dyke Brown again. Just pull it out. I'm gonna darken this up a little. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my phalo blue. So right in here somewhere, just gonna drag that paint in and create a little wall. And swipe it down. You can hear that knife drag a little bit, but I'm not scraping. I don't wanna scrape all that paint off. Pull through again. Just pick it up, put it back where you need it to be. And we'll make another little higher piece. Let that come right on down. So we wanna highlight this one, same idea. Maybe we'll brighten it up a little bit. My little bit of titanium white in there. Uh, throw a little more of my dark sienna too. Get my roll of paint. So a lot of this happens with the palette knife. You don't need much, one inch, two inch. That fan brush was just for a little tiny bit. And then this guy. So now I wanna add some highlights here. I always try and keep my fingers on the handles. You don't wanna put them on the knife because then you're pushing too much. You just wanna gently touch and get a little highlight. And drag another one. I let all those breaks happen. That's what's giving me my texture. Bob would always say, that's where a squirrel could live. So you want these little things to happen. And a lot of them do, they just, they just happen. So we'll get this big guy highlighted too. Perfect. I'm gonna swipe this off. I think we're about done with this palette knife for a little bit anyways. So now we've kind of got all these things in there, but they just seem to be floating. So. I'm gonna grab my liner brush, which I didn't tell you about. It's my uh, top secret weapon here. So this little skinny brush, I'm just gonna get a little paint thinner and go into some of my browns. So if you ever watched Bob on TV, you would hear him say a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. So we're gonna grab a little bit of paint and I'm just gonna give the idea of a few little branches floating back in these trees. Just the idea, not too much. I don't need to go in and put a giant uh, trunk. I'm just kind of twisting and letting them appear here or there. These are the details that I think kind of really make a painting. You see all these little bits here and there. Where's the front? 
And we're just gonna rinse that guy off a little bit. You don't really wanna beat the devil out of the liner brush. We'll keep him safe over here. All right, so we've got our cliffs. Let's put some foliage in here. I need some foliage. So I'm gonna go back to my two inch, one inch rather, one inch. Math isn't my thing. So I'm gonna swipe this off, get rid of some of that paint. Again, I don't really need to clean it. You can. I try and stay out of that paint thinner as much as possible. Weird things can happen with the uh, liquid clear and the paint thinner. Sometimes there's a weird reaction. So I just try and stay out of that paint thinner as much as possible. And we're gonna put some kind of little ferns, kind of just cascading down the side here to trap those rocks in place. So we're gonna go into that sap green again. Got a nice big pile. And we're gonna spend that time on the palette getting that texture. We wanna see that texture. What happens on the palette is gonna happen up here. So I'm just gonna gently touch. And again, I don't wanna kill all my black. I can let some of this peek right over that. And we can even just spill right over into the water. I'm gonna throw a couple more right up onto this rock wall. And just really plant that in there. Tap off a little bit. I don't really need to clean because I don't want this, this cadmium yellow is really bright. So I like to tone it down with what's left on my brush. So I'm just gonna drag through and get some of my highlight color. I'm using the cadmium yellow and I got a little, little bit of that Indian yellow in there. It looks very orange. It comes out much more yellow than it looks in the tube. And just here and there, a little sparkle. Just gently touch. Just let that spill right over the side. And we've got this whole cascading wall. I'm gonna throw a couple in here too, just to kind of trap that waterfall. It needs a place to live. So we're just gonna go through our sap green again. And I'm just gonna tap and turn, tap and turn, tap and turn. And just let that spill right down to the base. All right. And we're gonna throw a few highlights on here. right at the base. I wanna add a little greenery over here too. So I'm gonna go in those same colors. And maybe we have some even just spilling out onto this path. It's not a very trimmed forest. Maybe we've got a few pieces just kind of traveling down this wall. Maybe a little moss traveling right down. right into the water even. Perfect. So I wanna bring some of that reflection into the base there. Get rid of some of that extra paint. Again, just going back to the paper towels. Pleasantly surprised, the oil paints actually clean up really nice. So at the end of the day, when I'm covered, I just grab a little Dawn dish soap, takes it right off. Baby ducks and oil painters. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of this reflection from the greenery at the base too. And then we're gonna soften that up again. Like we need a bush. I'm gonna throw a bush here. So I'm gonna use that uh, one inch brush again, but I'm gonna go a little bit different this time. I'm turning my brush vertical and I'm dragging down really firm and it's kind of rounding the underside of my brush. Looking for that popcorn ceiling and then I'm gonna flip it over. And just in the bottom here, 
I can add a few little bushes just to trap that and push it back a little bit. Get rid of some of that. I already kind of built in the highlights there. We had them going. All right. Let's put a water line in. This is one of my favorite parts. So we're going to grab some of that titanium white. Get our little roll of paint. And we're just going to place this right along the edge and pretty firm pressure and create a little shoreline right along the edge. And we'll skip the waterfall. I can let that green reflection poke right out underneath. All right, we're almost there. This waterfall needs to end with a little splash though. I'm going to grab some of that white again, pulling through and lifting up. Getting my rounded edge again. I got a little purple in there. That's okay. This light source, everything that's going on in the background has got that purple tone to it. Purple is always a good decision in my book. But I'm just going to tap in a little splash at the bottom. That could be a big splash or a little splash. It's up to you. I always tell my students, you're the artist. You get to make those little decisions. And let's add one more little piece of land down here. I need a place to look at all this. So I'm just going to go through my sap green again. A bunch of paint. I'm going to make a little island. The lay of the land. So leave some dark spaces in there and it gives you some depth. But we'll throw a little sparkle on those too. Just a little highlight. So it gives us a few places. And let's see. Let's throw little rock in here for some other things to live around. And that one needs a highlight too. So we're going to pull through those colors again. A little bit of white. You could do any of these rocks in any color too. You could go more grays and blacks. I did a lot of brown. And we're just going to throw a little highlight on this guy. All right, last little step. You've got to sign it. Let's grab thin paint sticks to a thick paint. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that paint thinner again. Bob always signed his in bright red. You would often see him uh, say you needed all these colors and you're like, he never used the bright red. We well, squirted out about 10 big blobs of uh, bright red for his name. So I'm just going to give it a little signature and uh, we have ourselves a happy little painting. That's it. And we're back to the live paint, live Bob Ross paint demo with Stacy Sparrow Murphy. We are sitting here with the finished painting. Can we can we uh, do the wide shot and see that? Oh, here it is. There's here is the painting from Bob Ross, and here is the a finished painting from Stacy. Great job. That was awesome to watch. Thank you. Yeah. So. When you do a lot, this is, that's kind of what it looks like in a live studio setting, right? Yeah. It'll be you painting, except you're teaching everybody how to do it. Yeah. So what you just saw is exactly what I would do in a class, way slowed down. Mm -hmm. So this class, uh, we would teach in about three and a half to four hours. Instead of the 30 minutes that sure. you painted this yep. in. Yep. And we take breaks and 
Our studio is BYOB, so you bring drinks, relax, and we walk you through step by step. So anyone can come in and you can teach them how to do a Bob Ross painting. Absolutely. So uh, can we, oh, this is this graphic's a little squished, but uh, you're a certified Bob Ross painter. Yes. Right, so you, so you would offer different types of Bob Ross kind of paintings. Yes. And people can pick them right in the calendar, sign up for the class. Yep. And paint that painting. Exactly, if you just go right to our website, there's a calendar, it shows you which classes we're doing which days, and you register right online. Can you throw up the website on the screen for our viewers at home, please? Art on the Rocks, ma.com. And you have this nice calendar where you can click the calendar and you can see all the different pictures of the paintings that you want to paint. Yep. And you can sign up with your friends. Yep. And it's BYOB. Exactly. So you can bring a bottle of wine. Yep. You can bring a cooler, a beer. Yeah, whatever you want to bring. Snacks. Snacks, absolutely. We welcome food. We've got several great restaurants in the plaza. People go to Park Hill Pizza or the new barbecue place, Pig and Flames. Pigs and Flames, yep. oh my God. And so good. Uh, so good. <laughs> and uh, you know, Subway, go to Cumbies, grab a snack, grab a coffee, and uh, come on over. All right, so uh, Jared, can we throw up some pictures of paintings that other people have done of the of of Stacy's famous Bob Ross paint nights or oh here we so this is a Bob Ross painting that is uh last year we actually started doing them in acrylic so this is from last year when we were still doing them in acrylic I've now gone and done the official Bob Ross certification course and we're now using the Bob Ross paints and brushes and doing them in oil so but this, this is, is one. Oh, this yep, is the, this is the, a is student this the in the class. This is the waterfall. This is the waterfall. So you could go more purple or more blue, and they have that option. I had somebody do it in pink last week, which is amazing. Oh, cool. So you really get to uh, kind of choose your colors. And this was uh, this gentleman was uh, his first time at our studio. Really? First and time he's painting. And the palette knife here. Yep. Is that what that is? Yep. The palette knife doing in your waterline and the shore. Uh, this is, is this uh, the mountain in the back. Yep. This is from our ten-week course. We offer a ten-week course where you meet once a week for two hours. Uh, we have actually a couple kids in that class too that are like 12, 13 oh, cool. and adults um, and that's a painting that one of our students is working on in the 10 week course. Oh, look at all those. Yep. And, and you know, they're, there's the similar painting but they're all very different. Yeah. So this is from one of our like three hour classes, three to four hours. -ish. And what is this one called? Uh, you know, I don't know. Mm, the mountain. There's always the a stream. mountain, something or other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so you can you come out of this class with a painting that you want yeah. to put on the wall. Yeah, that's that's our hope. You know, if we can make it something attainable, and that you can do in a three-hour-ish window, uh, it's it's really satisfying to, especially people that have watched. He's such an icon, watching Bob Ross growing up, and I got a Bob Ross art kit in seventh grade, and I was like. That's it. My life is complete. <laughs> this is what I want to do with this my life. This is it. This is happening. I was like, I don't even think I opened it. It was Christmas. I don't even think I opened anything else. I was like, I need to go paint a cabin right now. Mm -hmm. I was like, move. I got to so, do this. I mean, in addition to obviously your newest certification is Bob Ross, but you're also a master's certified art instructor, correct? So I have a BFA from Mass College of Art. Oh, BFA. Yep. Yep. Bachelor of Fine Arts. Bachelor of Fine Arts uh -huh. and Art Education. Um, I opened Art on the Rocks. We're going into our 10th year. And uh, we offer acrylic classes, now oil. We've offered watercolor courses in the past. Um, we do kids' fine art classes weekly. They meet once a week for a 10-week uh, session. And uh, I love crafts, and there's totally a place for those. But our fine arts classes for kids is really about composition, color theory. Um, they learn materials that they might not have access to in public schools. Mm. Um, here's more people from this class. And uh, we're getting a lot of gentlemen in this class. A lot of gentlemen want to come paint Bob Ross. Really? Yeah, yeah. We usually service a lot of women. Uh, we're bringing out the men for Bob Ross. Cool. They're coming in quite often now, yeah. Ah. So, okay. So besides the live painting, you've just opened up and expanded into your adjacent space. Yes. And you now have the craft room. Yes. Uh-huh. So we're really excited. We've considered uh, adding space for a long time. And we just, we have lots of people that come really regularly and they're always like, Stacey, I really, I saw this thing on Pinterest and I wanna make it, but I don't know what to do. Or I saw this thing on a Facebook video that was being shared all over the place and I don't know what to do. So we're trying to create a space where we can help you with those projects. So it's almost like, um, 
you know, if you want to make uh, something and you need a little bell or a pom-pom or a piece of tape, well, you got to go buy like a whole roll of tape, a whole bag of pom-poms, a whole thing of bells. We've got all those little things, all sorts of embellishments and extras. So if you're doing a sign and you're like, I want to put a bunny on it with a little puffy tail, I have that. And you don't got to go buy a bag of them for and six And you've bucks. got the glue and the place and the mess. All you the can mess. make the mess right in your place. And then you leave it. Ah, that, yeah. that sounds really nice. The children love the glitter and they leave it. So we have some pictures of the craft room, uh, the space. Can we show the, the pictures of the space to our fantastic audience at home? <laughs> so we're just... Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we're just getting things in order and put into place. So these, all these racks... Oh, so here's some people that have used the craft room. Yeah. So good for families. Yeah. Can we show? Yeah. So here's a, a whole view of your entire space. It's very spacious. Yeah. And you have all kinds of ceramic items. Is that what those are? Yes. So you have a kiln. So we just added a kiln. Oh, how cool. So yes, hot. it is hot. hot. It is hot. <laughs> it is. It gets very hot. 2200 degrees it was at the other night. So it's not, but it's not your grandmother's ceramics. No. So that's one thing that, uh, to be perfectly honest, I kind of thought ceramics saw their heyday in the 80s and 90s when I was a kid. Um, my husband and I went to several workshops. One of the nationwide suppliers of the Paint Your Own Pottery Studios happens to be in Massachusetts. So we were able to go there for a few days to a workshop to learn some really modern techniques. It's not just grab a piggy bank and paint it pink anymore. So Even though that kind of sounds cool. It kind of <laughs> is. I might have painted a piggy bank for myself. <laughs> But uh, lots of really cool techniques. We're doing silk screening onto ceramics. Um, we're going to have free demo nights that we'll promote on our Facebook page where you can pop in and learn a new technique. Maybe you can't stay that night. Maybe you can. Mm. But you can learn some new uh, ways to do things and new techniques. And we have a grand opening on October 5th. October 5th from noon to 5. Oh, our grand opening. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so the kiln is up and functioning. Uh, we will have refreshments, we will have a local face painter. What time's the, uh, the, the grand opening? Noon to five. Noon to five. Yep. And October 5th, is that a Saturday? Saturday. Saturday, October 5th from yep. 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Yes. And you can pop in and check out the whole craft room without without having to purchase anything. No, we'll have well, you space available. Will wanna. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so yeah, no, we're totally gonna have open hours. You can come, you can craft, you can paint a ceramic. Um, we have the ability to do custom wood signs. So if you're like, I want a sign that says, Welcome to the Squalias, take off your shoes. Uh, I can make you a custom stencil on the spot. You can choose your wood shape that you want to put it on. You can put little images. Yep. Can you put a, a dog eating a shoe? Absolutely. That would be my house. All the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we can do that. So we can create custom things on the spot and help you create something that you've seen or you want to make. Um, and we're always open to suggestions. A lot of our products have come from customers saying, hey, can we do this? Sure. So this is the kind of thing I can just bring my daughter in, like, want to do a craft? Absolutely. Like, we'll bring, we'll, like, let's get a picture on the internet of something that you might want to do. Yep. And we can pop into the craft room and see if we can make it. Yeah. And we have tons of, we're coming, we're hanging them up. Uh, we have tons of finished samples and ideas uh, from ceramics, string art, wood signs, paper mache crafts. Uh, this is one of our favorite oh, little can painters. Throw, can we throw this? Oh, look at how adorable that is. She comes very regularly. She's a very serious artist. She, she knows what she, she wants looks to do. She's very serious. She's fantastic. <laughs> she knows exactly what she wants to do every week. But lots, lots and lots of options. Options for really young kids. We have people that bring in babies that want to do a handprint on an ornament at Christmas time. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And we, you can do ceramic ones now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And then all of that mess you see stays with us. Mm -hmm. So glitter? All, all the glitter. All the glitter? All so that I get glitter in my, on my carpet. No. Nope. We can keep it on yours. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we actually just ordered, because somebody had asked for glitter one day, and they were like, <laughs> I said, oh, I pretty much have all the colors. What do you want? She said black. I said, oh, I don't want black. She goes, how about hot pink? I'm like, oh, I don't have hot pink either. So I ordered <laughs> black and hot pink this week. So we've got so many options. We have big pegboards on the wall with Ribbon, twine, scissors, glue guns. And you also have, um, so if you don't want to make your own thing, you can buy things. You can buy things. Right, so you have a handmade kind of maker space where people can yes. sell their handmade wares from the local area. Yes, so we're featuring local artists uh, and crafters. 
Uh, we have. So you can just come in and shop. Absolutely. So we have a local uh, farmer that is selling their local honey. We have a local knitter. We have a seven-year-old photographer selling his photos. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we have really beautiful handmade um, stitched towels. Um, all the good things. Gorgeous. So you can see it all yourself at the craft room at Art on the Rocks at Park Hill Plaza. Yes. Right? And you can also do the paint night and do your Bob Ross painting just taught by certified Bob Ross painting instructor Stacy <laughs> Stacey Sparrow Murphy from the Art on the Rocks. All right? It was yeah. so great to have you on. Thank you so much for painting for us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. So thank you all at home for watching Discussing Fitchburg Now. We'll see you later.